This is the Sony 15mm f1.4, an APS-C lens that can truly give you full frame results, amazing low light capability for vloggers who want that professional bokeh, the background separation, but you don't want to spring for a full frame camera. I'm going to put this lens through our 10 point checklist, vlogging, sharpness, bokeh, chromatic aberration, astrophotography, autofocusing, everything coming up soon and I'm going to be comparing it against a pretty amazing lens. The Sigma 16mm f1.4, also an APS-C lens that happens to be about half the price. First comparing them you can see the Sony is significantly smaller. It also feels like it's about half the weight. The Sony also has this beautiful physical aperture ring so you can adjust the aperture on the fly before the camera is even turned on and guess what? This is declickable. That means for video, you can adjust the aperture seamlessly without shaking the camera. Such a great feature for videographers. Let's get started with the test, but as a reminder, we do not accept sponsorships from camera or lens manufacturers just so we can bring you unsponsored, unbiased results. So please subscribe to this channel. First, let's do the vlogging test. Before we get to the new 15 f1.4, I want to show you the results you get with a regular kit lens, which might make you want to upgrade to this. As you can see, the stuff in the background there is very sharp. It looks a lot like the results you'd get from a smartphone. Now let's put on the 15. Now you see some really nice background blur. Let's see how it focuses. My face, the camera, my face, the camera, my face, the camera. Now let's try the same test with the Sigma 16. This is the Sigma 16 millimeter and you can see it's a little bit tighter. That's the difference between 15 and 16 millimeters, about 22 and a half compared to 24 millimeter full frame equivalent. Try focusing on a camera, focus on my face, focus on a camera. Well, this is boring. They focused perfectly. I don't see any difference. Now let's take both of these for a walk. I'll pick this gimbal up to see things like how it handles the contrast with these backlights behind me. I'll say this lens is so heavy, the Sigma, that when I put it on the gimbal, I had to rebalance everything. If you do a lot of walking with this, it'll wear your arms out. So that might be enough reason to go ahead and spring for the lighter Sony lens. This is the Sony 15 and as you can see it's a little bit wider so I have a little more room to work with. I don't have to hold it out quite as far at arm's length so I find it more convenient. Let's see how it handles the contrast. Watching these side by side it's hard to tell the difference. Neither hunted for focus, the colors and contrast seem similar. The Sony is lighter and the Sigma is cheaper so take your pick. And now for the sharpness test, let's zoom in and see the difference in detail. But first, you can really see the difference in focal length. The 15 millimeter here is quite a bit wider than the 16 millimeter. Zooming in, they both look very sharp, showing the details of the printing here. I'm going to call it a tie, but it is worth noting that even if you zoom in to the same 16 millimeter angle of view, you won't lose any detail with the Sony. Looking at the bokeh in the background, you can see that Sigma's bokeh is rounder and generally looks better than the Sony's, which is out of shape and has sharper edges. I also took sample shots with the 16 to 50 kit lens. In case you're wondering if the 15 millimeter produces sharper results than that lens you probably got free with your camera. Let's zoom in. Looking at this text, yeah, the 15 millimeter is way sharper. There's so much more detail here. For the contrast test, I place a strobe directly behind the mannequin's head and fire it right into the lens. This creates the backlight conditions that portrait photographers often face when they don't want their subject's eyes in the sun. It also simulates landscape photographers who might shoot into a sunrise or sunset. This is a big win for the Sony, which doesn't show any ugly flaring over the model's face. Whereas you can see there's quite a bit of ugly purple flaring here. Let's zoom in to look at the eye. While contrast here seems similar, the eye on the Sony lens is quite a bit sharper. This is likely because autofocus is more accurate using Sony lenses on Sony bodies. I've noticed that the Sigma 16mm f1.4 really struggles with autofocus. Sometimes native lenses have that as an advantage. While the two lenses had similar sharpness in a lab test, in the real world you'll probably get better results with the Sony. Let's zoom in to check out the chromatic aberration. This is the colored fringing that happens on severely backlit and high contrast subjects. And you can see they both have quite a bit of green chromatic aberration around these flyaways. Chromatic aberration is bad on both of them, so I'm going to call it a tie. What about compared to the kit lens? Yeah. 
The kit lens looks pretty bad shooting directly into lighting like that, whereas even at f4, the 15mm handled it pretty well. For the macro test, I got as close as I could, and you can see I got closer with the Sony 15mm on the right. It's a minor difference, but the Sony gives you a little bit of an advantage when you need to get close to your subject. The starburst test is important for landscape photographers who might shoot into the sun at a high f-stop in order to create this effect. Here the Sigma wins with 18 points on the star. The Sony only has 14 points, indicating that it has a seven-bladed aperture. Also note this more distinct and rather unattractive flaring. Another surprising win for the less expensive Sigma. For astrophotography, you can see I was racing against the incoming cloud, so these aren't perfect conditions, but we can still zoom in and see the quality of the stars. Both lenses are basically indistinguishable. They're both excellent, especially for APS-C lenses. Even through the clouds, I feel comfortable calling this a tie. So which of these two lenses should you get for your Sony APS-C camera? Well, if money is no object, the Sony 15mm f1.4 is better. The optical performance is a little bit better. The controls are better. It's lighter, it's smaller, but it is twice the price of the Sigma. So the Sigma remains a great value-oriented option, but for those of you who do have the extra 350, 400 bucks, I strongly recommend the Sony. Something that's free is subscribing to this channel. So please do that. And if you have any questions, write a comment down below. Bye.